Even as events continue to unfold in Kenya in rapid succession, there are a few truths that are coming out very clearly. Yeah, or there are few aspects that are coming out extremely clearly. Yes, one of them is the fact that the Luo community in Kenya are being targeted. Okay, that has become extremely obvious. Okay, now if you doubt, let's just uh, take in this uh, chain of events, all of them in the public domain, and uh, just tell me what you make of them when you put them together. You will remember that just before the elections, a media report uh, came out that alarmed a lot of people, okay? And this was the body bags issue, yeah? We were informed that a lot of body bags had arrived in Kisumu, okay? Now the interesting thing, and take very careful note of this, there was no report of body bags being taken anywhere else in Kenya, okay? No other hotspot in the country received body bags. Now, for those who are not familiar with Kenya, in Kenya, body bags are not very common, okay? Body bags are a very foreign thing to Kenyans. Indeed, body bags are mostly used by organizations like the Red Cross, yes, uh, which is an international organization, and they would tend to distribute uh, the equipment uh, in a similar manner to all their branches worldwide, yes? So body bags may be common with the Red Cross. But for the rest of the country, body bags are things we see in movies. And so Kisumu receives a lot of body bags, okay? And then somebody plants a story in the media and says that the body bags were donations from the Red Cross. Remember that? And of course the Red, the Red Cross is very quick to deny this because obviously the Red Cross is accountable to their head office for every equipment they receive. And therefore, you can imagine uh, a boss somewhere uh, seated in the Red Cross headquarters uh, reading the papers that in Kenya, the organization has donated body bags. <laughs> what do you think they'd think? They'd think maybe their supplies, yeah, which are always in short supply because the Red Cross is kept very busy worldwide, yeah, are being uh, embezzled uh, and given out as donations. You know, there's some fishy business going on. And so the local Red Cross naturally were very quick to deny that report and they said they had not donated any body bags. So where did the body bags come from? They were obviously purchased by those who had already anticipated trouble with the 2017 general elections, yes, and were making elaborate preparations for that trouble, Elab uh, preparations that were more elaborate and more widespread and more massive than anything we have seen in this country before. Yeah, don't even talk about 2013, because in 2013 should have been the most sensitive year, since that was the first election since the troubled 2007 elections and the post-election violence that went with it. And therefore, one, it would stand to reason that uh, everybody would be very careful about 2013, and therefore, elaborate arrangements would be made. Nothing like that happened in 2013. And 2013, despite the fact that there was a dispute over those elections, uh, which went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled, there was no violence, yeah? But come 2017, the government was already preparing well in advance. Anyway, after the body bags, we went into the elections. Now, immediately after voting, we started hearing reports of violence in Kisumu. You know the rest of the story? Those reports have been persistent, Baby Samantha died in Kisumu, a six-month-old toddler, yeah, who was killed inside uh, the parents' uh, house. Yes, not a protester, definitely. Okay, and we also had, we have also seen on video, including on this channel, police breaking into houses. Yeah, Pre breaking into houses to clobber people. Yes, and maim them. Okay, that is not news in Kenya. We know that. But now, the latest is that we are getting live, proven, solid evidence information that Luos are actually being killed. We are getting evidence that is obvious to everybody that it is really not about uh, uh, disabling protesters. Yeah, It is not really about controlling protesters. It is about killing and maiming a certain community.
okay now there's one particular video that has gone viral and you can see pictures of it uh, on your screens now where members of the police i'll just call them the police for now yeah anti riot police actually we laid somebody who was not protesting actually it was a, a, a motorcycle border border person carrying a passenger yes and not involved in any violence and minding their own business and they were laid that they were laid that person yeah beat him up thoroughly yes beat him up so seriously that at the end of the clip the person cannot walk yeah you know the beat him at the knees joints you know where where it really matters the feet so finally the person cannot walk and to make matters worse they even go ahead and they destroy his motorcycle what is this now after this latest developments one cannot help but go back to the earlier claims yes that uh, in kisumu people were being killed and the bodies dumped into lake victoria of course the government very strongly denied these uh, reports in fact uh, a blogger uh, this kisi lady nyar kisi yeah was arrested for uh, facebook postings and one of the reasons that really act the police and uh, provoked them into making this arrest was that she she said on her page that uh, lures were being killed and the bodies being dumped into lake victoria something which was being everybody was talking about but they targeted this particular lady because this really act the powers that be now of course the people who are doing uh, uh, this dumping of bodies into lake victoria are not amateurs yeah and they're not stupid yeah they are very very clever people okay now we are told by experts that the best place to dump a body yeah where it will never be found is the lake okay uh, especially if the lake is deep as deep as uh, lake victoria is if you dump a body there it will never be seen again okay that's the general uh, uh, that's the general conclusion we get from experts okay now because you and me know that uh, there's a greater power involved in these elections by some miracle some bodies actually managed to float to the shore and they were recovered and guess what these bodies had bullet wounds all that is in the public domain okay these reports have appeared even in the mainstream media yeah daily nation the star and so on and so forth now the latest developments uh can enable us to comfortably conclude that those stories that were strongly denied by the government must be true yes because it would all fit like a glove it would all make sense that this thing has been continuing yes and that the latest we are seeing is just a consistency in the way the low community is being treated in Kenya by the powers that be so what's really going on here yeah what's this ethnic cleansing all about because i don't think i can call it anything else yes uh the definition of ethnic cleansing kwa sababu si vizuri kutumia lugha yenyewe vibaya yeah <laughs> we must uh, be sure what we are saying yes uh, ethnic cleansing means the mass expulsion or killing of members of an unwanted ethnic or religious group in a society okay now i know serious uh, what i'm saying is i know weighty my statements are but uh, they're not coming from the blue i've started by telling you the body bag story you have read those stories in the media in fact you can just go back to google and you just google all the story all the stories everything that has happened in kisumu since this mess in kenya started and then just piece together you know put the story in, the stories in chronological order put the articles in chronological order put everything there even the claims yeah the uh, un unproven claims and when you look at it as a whole yeah there's no court in the world even the worst kangaroo court cannot be able to look at all this and tell you there's nothing happening nobody in their right mind can look at all this and tell you there's no ethnic cleansing going on now we will try and answer this mystery yeah because uh, this channel is not about getting emotional this channel is not about giving unverified information yes this channel is about truths solving mysteries yeah coming up understanding issues much more yeah and putting our emotions aside 
as we try and understand and ask what is really going on. Okay? So where, what is this targeting of laws all about? Why the laws? Yeah? Why even get so excited that you take body bags into Kisumu in advance, well in advance even before the election started? Yeah? What is this all about? Now we're going to take a short break. When you come back, I will give you some information that will just hit you so hard that you'll not want to believe it, but it is absolute truth. It makes sense, it explains what is happening, and it makes me sick to the very pits of my stomach. See you in a little while after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Now for us to solve the mystery of why the laws are being targeted, yes, because so far in everything that has happened since uh, the ill-fated 2017 elections, the law lives have been lost. Uh, we would comfortably say that the majority of uh, casualties and the majority of the people who have died are from the law community. I believe we can comfortably say that. Okay, and not only that, we have been able to see atrocities, we have been able to see terrible, terrible things being done to the law community, as is evidenced by videos which have now come out and are going viral on social media. Okay, so definitely we know there's something going on. So, why? That is a question we must answer in this part. Now, I will take you back to the oaths taken by the Jomo Kenyatta administration. Yes. Uh, this, of course, is something which is also in the public domain. We have had uh, various articles in the media about the Jomo Kenyatta Oaths, yes. We've even had uh, a very respectable member of the community, yes, uh, a member of the House of Mumbi, the late Reverend John Gatu, yes, who came out very strongly and con not only condemned the Oaths, yeah, confessed that his family had been a victim of being forced to take the Oaths by force, okay, and he himself had been approached by Jomo Kenyatta to take these oaths. Okay? So this is something which is in the public domain. And the Reverend got warned that uh, there would be dire consequences in Kenya. Yes? Politically and, you know, the whole Kenyan community would be split and have a lot of problems if no uh, uh, deliberate effort was taken, deliberate and urgent effort was made to cancel or reverse those oaths that were taken. Yeah, we know all that. Now, there are a few things you need to know about oaths, because I know most of us are ignorant about them, okay? Now, number one, oaths are very detestable. Yeah? Oaths are a foul smell to the Almighty, our God. They are satanic. Yeah? And now one would understand why, yeah, we are seeing, at least most of us believe, that God is involved in Kenya, and that he wants to cleanse all the dirt and all the evil of the past and give us a new Kenya. Yeah? One would understand why God would want to do something like this when you understand a little more about the odds. Now, how is this linked to the, what we are seeing happening to the laws? Okay, it is linked to what we see happening to the laws because normally odds are taken against an enemy. Okay? Oaths are taken in order to ensure that the person uh, who's taking the oath is involved not only in defending those uh, or the owners of the oath and uh, the, the community or the part uh, which is taking the oath, 
but also to be able to not hesitate when they're given orders to deal with yeah, people perceived to be the enemies of those taking the oath. Now let's go a little bit, uh, let's go a little deeper into this oath so that we understand exactly what I'm talking about, yeah, so that you don't think I'm just uh, making up things, yeah. Now, uh, for instance, there's a big revelation from the colonial government about the Mau Mau oaths, you know, uh, what was involved in those Mau Mau oaths, the content of those Mau Mau oaths, what people were doing in taking those oaths, and it will completely horrify you. I would not advise you to watch this video, yeah, or even to listen to what I'm saying if you're about to have a meal or, or you've already had a meal, because I assure you you're going to throw up. Now, the content of the Mau Mau Oaths included things like to kill Europeans, yeah, to kill any European, to refuse orders from Europeans, to steal money from Europeans, to burn the crops belonging to Europeans, and so on and so forth, yeah? So definitely there's an enemy when an oath is being taken. It is normally taken against a certain enemy, okay? Now, what was the main focus of the Jomo Oaths? The main focus of the Jomo Oaths was the Luo community, okay? Now, just to give you a quick background, the Oaths were taken at a time when the government of Jomo Kenyatta felt that they were threatened by the Luo community. Yeah? Or rather they saw the Luo community as the only hindrance, as the only obstacle to them achieving their aim of having total control, unhindered control of the country called Kenya and being able to do whatever they wanted without being hindered, yeah? including looting the economy, uh, you know, the, um, allocating fertile farms to themselves, yeah? Uh, and plots and grabbing land and doing all sorts of things, okay? The Luo were the only hindrance to that. And even politically, as a political challenge, the Luos were seen as the only community capable of challenging the, the presidency of uh, Jomo Kenyatta. Yes, and of course there were very many prominent people at that time, yeah, very respected all over the country. People like Tom Boyer, people like the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, father to Raila, and so on and so forth, yeah? These were people who the government saw as threats, immediate threats to the presidency, okay? So the oaths were taken against the Luo community. And it is important to remember when you take an oath, if you decide to break the oath for any reason, like for example, if, uh, which is very unlikely, but for instance, if reason comes back to you, you still cannot break the oaths because there will be repercussions and consequences because you have already sworn yeah, and normally what they swear is that uh, if uh, they break the oath or they go against the oath, then uh, they should die. Yeah, so they cast themselves to death. It's a very serious thing. Now this is the part that uh, can easily make you throw up. I've given you a warning early enough, okay? Uh, and it'll give you an idea of how an oath, how dirty and detestable and uh, crazy an oath is, okay? Now, for instance, uh, and I'm quoting from information uh, gathered by the colonial government about the Mau Mau Oaths, yeah? A ram is killed, the penis is cut off, and then an ewe is killed, and the vagina of the sheep is inserted into the vagina of a Kikuyu prostitute who is having a monthly period. Yeah? It's then removed from the vagina of the prostitute and is licked seven times by the person receiving the oath. What? I mean, I can't, uh, I can't even, uh, <laughs> it is so difficult even revealing this to you, that's how sickening and detestable oaths are. And I can show you they are real and they are sick, yeah? It even involves, uh, for instance, this uh, um, report from the Naivasha confession, Confessions, there were some oaths taken in Naivasha by the Mau Mau during colonial times, and uh, they somehow got people to confess, don't ask me how. Because, you know, in an oath, one of the rules, the first rules about an oath is you never talk about it to anybody, okay? But some of this was who got uh, people to confess. Your guess is as good as mine, but uh, these guys are also known, very well known for some of their torture techniques, yeah? Uh, in that particular, the Naivasha Confessions, uh, the oath, one of the things people did was to drink the urine of a woman during a menstruation. You drink it seven times. Oh gosh. 
then the wrist bones of our body are broken up of, of our body I assume a human body are broken up and mixed with uh, excreta and earth and blood and are taken seven times and in those more more oaths there was even murder involved oh gosh now now that we know we have a better understanding of what oath taking is all about we can come back now to our topic now obviously these oaths that were taken were taken against the law community okay so when oaths are taken against the law community you can only expect one thing yeah you can only expect a lot of bloodletting yes uh, which will affect the community which is being targeted it's as simple as that now following the oaths taken by the Mau Mau uh, these are just some of the uh, atrocities committed by the Mau Mau yeah uh, as a result of the oaths that they had taken yes uh, there's the Larry massacre uh, there's the decapitation and general mutilation of victims yeah there's bodies bound up in sacks and dropped into wells there's torture before murder. There's ex exhumation of bodies and eating the petrified flesh. Yeah. Drinking of human blood. Yeah. Death by hanging. Pregma pregnant women split open along the stomach. Victim heads down while the heads are slowly sawed off with pangas. Maiming of cattle by hamstring. And cutting off ears of persons who have not taken the oath so as to identify them in future. Yeah, as a government loyalist. What? Folks, my work here is not to scare you or to horrify you. My work here is to, for you to open your eyes and to open your ears and to be able to see things which many people do not want you to see, which the powers that be do not want you to see. Yeah? The bottom line is that oaths are very serious things and that what is happening currently in the law community yeah, makes a lot of sense when you also tie in information on the odds that were taken by the Jomo Kenyatta administration. Okay? Now there's some more information on this issue that I cannot give out on this open channel. Believe you me, it is extremely sensitive. But you can easily get it by being a member of uh, Club 1999. Yeah, it's very easy. Just look at the description area of this video. You'll see all the information of how you exactly can do that. Okay? Wow! This is really, really sickening. It is worrying. It is horrifying, okay? Now you saw in my last uh, uh, um, recording, one of my recent recordings and clips, I showed you bodies of people who had been killed in uh, Nyanza, yeah, places like Bondo, Homa Bay, and so on and so forth, okay? And uh, the whole issue, I did not want to terrify or horrify you, the whole thing is for you to know what is happening, yeah? A clear, accurate record of exactly what is unfolding in our country, at a time when the, the media have been really sat on, not revealing information. At a time when even the social media is under attack, yeah, under the guise of uh, hate speech. Yeah, the social media is really under attack, it's being monitored in order that the truth may not come out. Okay? So, what one of my main objectives here is to make sure that that truth comes out. No matter how horrible it is, no matter how frightening it is, but at least when the truth comes out, it's actually less frightening, it's less horrifying, because now a person can be careful, a person can take action, knowing exactly what is going on. Until next time, this is Chris Kubekuja.